Welcome, y'all, to episode number 27. 27. Episode 27. Wow, doesn't seem like it's been that long, right? But we're working on it. Yeah, so we're gonna do some fun stuff, and um, hope y'all been enjoying some of those unreleased things we've given you. We've got a few more coming up pretty soon, but we're gonna start a series where every now and then, this is my idea, because this is Leonard Skinner and Southern music, or what we call Southern music, um, and things that are closely related to Leonard Skinner and Ronnie Van Zant. So tonight we're gonna start a series that's Basically, we're going to call The South's Going to Do It Again. And this can be based on, we're going to do a show on every band that was mentioned in the famous Charlie Daniels song, The South's Going to Do It Again. And to really do that series, we need to start it off by talking about one of Ronnie Van Zant's closest friends in the music business. And that was... Charlie Daniels. Charlie Daniels. Um, a, a huge figure in Southern music for a lot of reasons, and we're gonna get into those. But basically, uh, he was born in North Carolina in like 1936, I think. Um, his parents moved around a lot. I think his father was in the lumber industry or something like that. Could have been. Yeah, um, took an early interest in music. By the way, his real name is Charlie Daniel. There's no S. They said that his birth certificate got filled out incorrectly. So blame it on somebody else. But it's like Jack Daniel, I mean, the apostrophe S means everything to yeah. all the people we know. Yeah, true. Um, anyway, took a liking to music and got into bluegrass and was really a Bill Monroe, Foggy Mountain boy guy, right? I mean, loved that kind of music. Um, the first band he was in was kind of a bluegrass cover band called the Misty Mountain Boys, I think, in the North Carolina area. And um, pretty quickly, he became a great fiddle player. I mean, he was a guitarist, but fiddle was sort of his, that was sort of what his axe was, right? Turned into his moneymaker for sure. Moneymaker, yeah. Moneymaker. I mean, so he started writing songs. In fact, Elvis recorded one of his songs in like 1964. Wow. Um, so he was a songwriter, right? And and so the guy who was working with him on some stuff said, man, you ought to move to Nashville where you can be a great session player because you're just so talented, right? He could play guitar, he could play fiddle. Look at Charlie Daniels' credits. How long do you think that list goes? Yeah, I mean, writer. He, he was all over it. Musician. In the late 60s, um, Bob Dylan came to town to record the Nashville Skyline. You know, Lay Lady Lay, where Bob Dylan goes country for a minute. And he got his big break. Um, he was asked to come in and substitute on guitar, I think. For the, the regular session guitars couldn't be there. They brought Charlie in, and he was playing on some stuff. And the, the later that night, the guitar showed up. And so Charlie started packing his stuff up, and Bob Dylan goes, where are you going? Well, this, no, no, you're staying here. And so he got his big break, really. And then suddenly after that, he's really in, in demand, right? Charlie Downs makes a name for himself with Bob Dylan. Um... And then he creates his own band. I mean, he had a band back in the 50s or early 60s, but then he creates the Charlie Daniels Band in the early 70s, I think 1970, actually. Still doing some session work. He, Bob Dylan wanted to use him every time that he possibly could during those times, um, and other people did. And Charlie's writing songs still. They're being recorded. So he forms the Charlie Daniels Band, and guess what happens? It's, 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 it's at the perfect moment where Southern music is blowing up. You know, the Allman Brothers are there. Um, Capricorn's getting started. It's just a lot of things are happening in the South. And Charlie Daniels comes on the scene with, he's a little bit different kind of guy because I I want to say that all those Jacksonville guys had a natural kinship. But Charlie Daniels was the kind of man who, who was kind of bigger than his music because he believed in kinship. He believed in all those guys working together, traveling together, having shows together. And if you look on the credits for all the albums, whether it's Marshall Tucker or Wet Willie or Leonard Skinner or Charlie Daniels, all of them, they all talk about thanking their Southern music brethren, you know, because they toured, they, they did shows, they, they played on each other's records. I mean, we'll talk more about that. I mean, like Marshall Tucker, Charlie Downs all over Marshall Tucker records. 
you know, just craziness. Um, but that whole kinship and that, that spirit that we still feel today, I think, about Southern music and why it all kind of wraps together. Um, I think Charlie Daniels was really at the heart of that, you know? I mean... And he so, blended into Southern rock. He made himself blend into it with his guitar work, with his violin fiddle work. Yeah. Um, and he he learned, he toured with guys. Leonard Skinner opened up for him. And they, they, they developed a kinship right there with Ronnie Van Zandt. Yeah. Um, you know, Charlie wrote early on The Uneasy Rider. I think that came out in 73. Kind of a talking bluegrass kind of thing. And kind of made a name for himself. Kind of funny song, really. You still like to quote lines from I it today. It. I love it. I mean, you like the old green teeth line. I like right? to kick old green teeth right in the shin. Yeah. Uh, so, and then the next thing really happened was a Fire on the Mountain, which is why we're here today. Uh, the record had the classic, classic song, The South's Gonna Do It Again, misconstrued by some people in the North as saying we wanted to go back to the old South or whatever. But it was really about Charlie Downs talking about kinship of all the Southern artists and musicians, which, you know, again, is very, very special. That's who Charlie was. Um, had, had a few more hits, was doing okay. Um, it's an interesting story in Charlie Downs' autobiography when he talks about his last time with Ronnie Van Zandt. They were... They opened up for Leonard Skinner on the last tour, on the last date of the torture tour, as I understand it. There's a picture backstage showing Charlie and Ronnie. And Ronnie had on a shirt that you're soon going to be able to buy from my website that says, Who the hell are the Rolling Stones? <laughs> Classic picture. Maybe we can get in this and show it to you here. Pretty cool. Um, but when the plane went down, Charlie was starting a tour in St. Louis. And they were at the, the, the Kyle Center, I think it was. And <clears throat> broke his heart. And as you know, it's his poem that's on the bench at the cemetery uh, on Million Mile Reflections, which was Charlie's huge national worldwide breakout album with Devil Went Down to Georgia, with Song of the Year, with Seaman, and all that kind of stuff. There's a song, of this, it's really about Ronnie Van Zandt, Million Mile Reflections. I guess it was about Janis Joplin, Elvis Presley, and Ronnie Van Zandt, right? Um, musicians we've lost it was just so heartfelt and as I understand it at Ronnie's funeral 30 special played Amazing Grace and Charlie read this poem you know it's just um, a testament to who Charlie Daniels was well qualifications Charlie Daniels he was a poet and a storyteller and that's where his music lays in oh you're so right storytelling storytelling I, and, and I'll tell you it's the hardest kind of song to write like even like was it um Bo Booger Swamp. Is that what it is? Or Boogie Swamp? Uh, Wooly Swamp. Wooly Swamp. Wooly Swamp. Legend of Wooly Swamp. You listen to the words and the, and the things he comes up with. I always marvel that he used the term footpath. And it fits in. You know, oh, my God. I never even thought about using a word like that. But Not trail. Footpath. So Ronnie Van Zant wrote songs. Most of the stuff he lived. Right, or about people he knew. There wasn't a lot of real fantasy things, you know? Charlie Daniels could dream up some stuff. I mean, where did the devil went down to Georgia come from? Interesting. I mean... And where's that thought play in your... Yeah, thing? yeah. In, in your dreams, where does that come from? And, and we can go through a whole list of these songs, and it's just, it's amazing. And that, this... this but again, he's talking about Southern rock and roll influence. Yeah. From the devil, going to Georgia, you know, down south. Yeah, and, and that's true. That, there is some of that in that, you know, some of that crossroads stuff from that. But it's just, as I listened to him, and we saw him, I saw him July the 4th, 1980, at the Mid-South Coliseum. And um, we were pretty messed up, actually. I think Pure Prairie League opened up. But I can remember just being so so excited, so thrilled to hear those songs and in our state, it was perfect to be listening, you know. Um, <laughs> he's a Tennessee, he turned into a Tennessee boy. He was, you know, he's quite the performer, and he had a band that was just Cracker Jacks. I remember his, there was a guy named Taz DiGregorio, was like his keyboard, just a multi-instrument kind of guy. Anyway, his band was great. Charlie was great as a fiddle player, who's unbelievable. And I think he's underrated as a guitarist, really, you know. But 
They had a big influence. I think he did a Ronald Reagan song, In America. In America. Which was kind of a big hit. That was on the, the next record after that, I think. Um, I, if you're still if you're telling stories, you're going to get political sometimes. And you're either going to get hatred from it or gratification from it. But at that time, America, it wasn't, it wasn't bad to say you loved your country. Right? It wasn't bad. Now, it's a whole different world and we can't, we can't even say that. So if anybody says I said that, I didn't which is a crazy world to live in, but we do. Um, and it's sad that people like Charlie Daniels are no longer with us. He died four years ago, I think in 2020, and performed right up to the end and actually toured Marshall Tucker up until the end, you know, which, I don't know, it's just, when we tell me that um, um, Charlie Daniels was, let's see, 64, he, he was 84 years old. Yes, yeah, I think so. So he, he was on up there and... and um, it's sad that we didn't see Ronnie Van Zandt at 80. Ain't that the truth. I mean, wouldn't he have been Ain't fun? that the truth. Wouldn't he have been fun? Um, another thing that we that Charlie Daniels did that I think was very cool is he started something in Nashville called the Volunteer Jam. All right? And the Volunteer Jam was a kind of a deal where the Charlie Daniels band and his friends would put on a show. And he would invite different people there and everything. And, of course... Leonard Skinner was never there, but the Volunteer Jam in 1979 was the first live concert reunion where Leonard Skinner got back together. And they played Freebird, and I have the record. It's absolutely haunting. I mean, if you remember how when Rise and Collins would play it, and they put the hat on the microphone out front, I could always hear the echoes of Ronnie Van Zandt. But this time in Nashville, the first time, it was just unbelievable, you know? Just unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> here's the original volunteer jam record if you look at it it's got um <clears throat> chuck lavelle jimmy hall some of y'all don't like jimmy i do marshall tucker band dickie betts you get the first volunteer jam here's a later one volunteer jam seven which interestingly enough the record opens up with sweet home alabama by the charlie daniels band uh, this is from 1981 uh who else is there delbert mcclinton was there crystal gale uh, Bobby Bear, Jimmy Hall, we like Jimmy Hall, <laughs> Ted Nugent was there, can you believe Ted Nugent, uh, and Toby Gray. So there were always cool things, and I don't think Charlie made a fortune on the Volunteer Jam. I probably figure it was for some kind of charity, you think? I don't know for I think sure. you told me that, right? I don't I don't know for sure. It just seems like it should be. Would not have surprised me, right? Would not have surprised me anything that Charlie Daniels did. Um, I, he loved music. He loved Southern heritage and Southern music and the stuff that we were all a part of uh, and did everything he could to further those relationships and the kinships among all these bands. And the South's going to do it again. Uh, of course, you know, it's also going to, what's great, guess who I'm going to get to talk about? Um, Grinder Switch Grindr is mentioned in this song. So, you're Drew Lombard. So it's yeah. coming, people. <laughs> We're finally going to get to hook Drew Lombard into this whole series, which may be why we did this anyway. So you Drew Lombard fans, which it's just me as far as I know, because <laughs> he was the greatest, um, we get to do that. I, we could talk about Charlie Daniels forever. There's a lot of good interviews. His son has done a great job of re representing him, uh, Charlie Daniels Jr., um, he meant a lot to all of us, and he lot, meant a lot to Ronnie Van Zandt. And Ronnie Van Zandt meant a lot to Charlie Daniels. And that's really all I need to know. You know, it's just beautiful. Um, some moments that I wish we could have more of. Who the hell are the Rolling Stones? <laughs> I would never have seen that shirt if I hadn't been researching this episode on Charlie. But there it is. Ronnie Van Zandt has that shirt. You've got a bunch of Ronnie Van Zandt shirts. I got lots of pictures of Ronnie Van Zandt shirts, too. <laughs> you got the Shoko shirt. You got a bunch I of cool stuff. I got a few. Yeah, I'm, cool still, stuff I'm still working on some now. <laughs> yeah, you're much cooler than I am. But anyway, so thank you all for watching uh, the Charlie Daniels thing. Coming up for the next, I don't know, won't be doing every episode, but we'll work in all these guys, including Grind or Switch. Um, I think Charlie Daniels left us a many and many songs that we can all reflect reflect back on. You know that they're still credible today. You know his image lives on and lives on. This and he's kept the southern music living on. Yeah, I mean it's true. It it is just phenomenal, and um, we miss Charlie Daniels. So anyway, let us know in your comments. Let us know what you think about Charlie Daniels. I know everybody loves him. I don't think you can say a negative thing about the guy. Um, 
Anyway, anything else? I think he loved his country. He loved Tennessee. He loved the South. He loved Southern music. Fire on the mountain, brother. Fire on the mountain. So we'll see y'all next time here on Skinner and Shorts on YouTube. Until then, see ya.